tip number one you have five core types use the one that match your strategy when you enter your code you will only see two and you must understand that each ethos of your culture can only use two types of core types so if you want to change your core type to some of the other type like the diplomatic code you need to change your ethos or, or to change to some other culture that uses that other ethos. Let's see an example. We have the Anglo-Saxon culture and we are going to keep the Anglo-Saxon culture but change its ethos. So we are going to split it into a neo culture called Neo English and we accept you must pay prestige. But now we can change the core tab type let me show you. With the original core type we were only able to choose between warlike and administrative and with the new ethos we are able to use diplomatic and administrative. Also to change you must pay again prestige. So tip number two since we are here we are going to use the power of the diplomatic court. All the courts are very powerful and once you upgrade your code to level 10 and get very powerful as you can see in the detail and let's apply now we have the diplomatic code and if we check up here we are going to see a message saying neighbors can be vassalized and we have two neighbors we are going to vassalize them and that is because we are using the new diplomatic code and that allows you to spread out very fast. There is a perk in the diplomatic tree through ruler that increases your vassalage acceptance by 25. So considering that the diplomatic court could give you about 40 points in level 10 plus 25 is more than 50 points in vassalage acceptance and allows you to get this kind of message and once you annex all these vassals you are going to be annexing more because it will spread like wildfire until you find a great kingdom but you just need to wait for it to dissolve. Machiavelli say that you must rule by fear or admiration but you should use both. Let's check this example this will help you also to control your vassals in this case I'm using to force to vassalize another ruler he has a plus 100 opinion of me but he also fears me so if we check the details we are going to convince him a bit more but if we check the details we see opinion of you plus 35 and intimidated by you plus 10 so they both stack if you have only a max opinion of 100 you are going to get gain only 35 but if you have some dread you are going to get a plus 10 so to get most of the results you need to combine both. You should go for dynasty of many kingdoms you need to have 10 independent kingdoms and I have it meet the requirements by the year 950 if you check my king let me split the kingdoms and here you can have the 10 kingdoms now I give to make them independent that is going to be quite hard because I need 10 family members and give one to each of them but how to achieve that well you combine the vassalage acceptance tip that I just mentioned with trying to pinpoint the kingdoms that are small and contain just one county. One of them is Britain. It's usually managed by Norse so you can fight a religious war and get it all the duchy and you get one kingdom here. I started as Alfred so I got England and Wales all with diplomatic vassalage acceptance. I only conquer Wales. Also nothing more here you should jump to Sardinia because here you have another an Argentine mine that is super important it provides you a lot of money and here you have two kingdoms also I conquer 
one dachi, this one, and from here it spreads like wildfire, the vassalage acceptance, so I did, didn't need to fight. And here I got more kingdoms, one kingdom here and another kingdom, Burgundia, from France, all also with vassalage. And you have another kingdom in Crete with only two provinces, two counties, and you have the kingdom of Cyprus with just two counties, also one duchy, one duchy. But if you go for the kingdoms, you have this one, Cyprus, Crete, you have Venice, that is one kingdom, Genoa, that is one kingdom, Sardinia is one kingdom, and Sicilia is one kingdom also. So you have many kingdoms that are very easy to take, Britain, one kingdom. Having perfect rulers is very important. If you get to have the three traits that are have each one of them has three levels, so by having just one on level three and the other ones on level one, you can enable strengthening the blood that will guarantee you that all your chives from now on will have almost perfect traits that will give you a high boost in the, the stats. But how to speed this up? First, you should completely forget about these succession types. They are pure trash. You should use one of the four types we have that have special succession laws. You can see those types by clicking on a title and you press add laws. And you have some groups like the Anglo-Saxon, the British and the Norse, the Scandinavian that have a special succession laws. In my case, I'm using Anglo-Saxon. I have it enabled. You will see that it's enabled but this small icon. And if you click the title, you will see this icon here that enables to pick your next successor among your most qualified members. So this way you pick the ruler that has the best traits and inheritable traits, like the most beautiful, intelligent and strong, and you choose him as your heir. Always marry matrilineal so you have plenty of new candidates you can keep marry with talented people. And now comes the key, create in the character finder a filter that filters by non-married and the people, the characters from your dynasty and browse them all and once you find each of the good characters you can invite them to your court because if not you're not going to be able to marry them. So invited to our court. You can use your hook since you are the head family but in this case it's not necessary. And let's unpass. And now we are going to be able to find a spouse for this guy since now he's part of our courtiers. So we are sure that we get for example for him an Amazon to compensate And well, this is an example of how this will work. So, Chaiso of this guy, maybe he's the granddaughter of your cousin of yours, is going to have good chances of having all the good traits. And then you can give the son titles and make him your heir. Another nice tip is that usually use you use your kids for making alliances or improving your blood, but you can invite other kids from other relatives and marry them for alliances and their alliances will be with you and not with their parents since now you are a member of your own court. So it's kind that you are stealing them, their, their alliance power. Some tips with the Holy Order is super important that you find one or more since you can use them for free as long as you are fighting a non-Christian enemy. But you can use them to find normal enemies. How? Well, you find a weak 
non-Christian enemy and you declare war to him in the meantime that you are at war with your standard enemy and you can merge both armies and fight first your standard enemy and then get rid of the non-Christian enemy. Also you can gain money from wars if you don't raise your army you just raise your Templars and you pick this trait you are going to be making 10% more total money so the net income will be about 15% and you keep the war as long as you want using the Templars. Typical example is for example against the Byzantine Empire you station your Templars here and the war will take a long long time and you will be gaining more money than you actually do. About how to control your vassals and, uh, vassals and avoid rebellions, you have short term measures and long term. In short term you can launch an exotic feast, remember to hire, to hi hire a good poet and a good court musician and then launch an exotic feast with level 5 in your court of food and that will lo lower the number of rebels also you can grant them to another vassal for example you have a friend of yours that is a duke and you grant them the unhappy counts and now you don't will have they don't re are your direct vassals so they won't show here and also you can grant them independence maybe if they are many in some cases one will make the difference and you are going to be able to take them and in extreme cases if you have one of them is criminal immediately imprison him so that will trigger the revolt before it will they were getting too powerful so try to catch them as soon as possible you can use alliances so you can use the tip that I mentioned before how to make alliances with not your kids but your kids from your other powerful relatives and finally you have long-term measures I recommend that your first move is to save money, sorry, save prestige for adding loyal subjects and also agrarian. Why agrarian? Because agrarian makes most of your vassals content, but you, you should pick as vassals only the content one. That way their childs will be content too and since that you are going to be content too, content and content gets along very well and they will like you more but also content is the opposite of ambitious and the ambitious character are the worst nightmare because they always try to get a rebellion and the content on the other side they will never show in rebellions and if you pick also loyal subjects as a tradition you are going to have going to have a very peaceful population and vassals.